Welcome to the Tarantula Collective. My name is Richard, and if you enjoy species-specific care and husbandry videos, be sure you hit that subscribe button, and don't forget to click the notification bell to turn on all notifications so you don't miss any videos I upload in the future. Today, we're gonna be covering one of the most requested New World Terrestrial Tarantulas so far since I've been making videos. So thank you to everyone that reached out in the comments of previous videos and left this suggestion. And if there's a species that you would like to see me cover in future episodes of Tarantula Tuesday, be sure to leave that suggestion down below in the comments. The Brachypelma albipelosum, known as the curly-haired tarantula, has recently seen its common name here in the hobby split into the Nicaraguan curly hair, which is a true form, and the Honduran curly hair, the hobby form. This is a staple species in the hobby and has been around for a long time. It is a great beginner tarantula as they are hardy, easy to care for, and fairly docile as adults. For a long time, the Honduran curly hair was the main tarantula you saw in the hobby, but some believe they have been subject to accidental or intentional crossbreeding with other closely related species, muddying their bloodline. Now the Nicaraguan is rumored to be a thoroughbred species, and they are kept separate from the hobby form now for breeding purposes. Due to the lack of taxonomical research using DNA, it is impossible to say with any certainty that they are different species, thoroughbred, hybrid, or just local variants. It is widely believed that if you purchase a Nicaraguan curly hair from a reputable dealer, that you will be getting a true form curly hair. There are some visual differences in the tarantulas as some are more golden brown, while others are a much darker, almost black color. What they have in common is the long, wiry, curly hairs that make them look almost fluffy. Visually, they look very similar, and that's probably why they're all classified under the same genus and species. Now, this is a New World terrestrial semi-burrowing tarantula that can be found in Honduras, Nicaragua, and Costa Rica in regions of the rainforest and found near rivers, at the base of trees, and in areas of the rainforest that have been cleared mostly along the Atlantic side of these countries. Being a New World Tarantula, their venom is not medically significant, but they do possess urticating hairs that they can kick around their burrow on the webbing, as well as kick into the air if they feel threatened. Urticating hairs can cause itching and even blisters, though I find this species' hairs to not be as irritating as other species, and due to their docile nature, mine has never kicked hairs at me in defense. They are slow-moving, relaxed, and very rarely show a threat pose. I keep this species like I keep all my New World Terrestrial Tarantulas. They do not have any special requirements for temperature and humidity, and they're very easy and straightforward when it comes to care. I keep my spiderlings in small acrylic AMAC boxes. I have used both the honeycomb style terrestrial box that is wider than tall, as well as the container store style enclosures that is deeper than it is wide. I prefer using the latter with this species as I have found they really like to burrow deep as spiderlings but either will be fine. I keep the substrate for my spiderlings a little more damp than I do for larger specimens, but avoid keeping things swampy. This can be accomplished by overflowing the water dish once a week or dripping water down the side corner of the enclosure. I try to keep the lower levels of substrate damp while allowing the top layers to remain dry, giving the tarantula the option to burrow deeper for more humid conditions or staying out on top for more aired ones. I keep them on cocoa fiber and provide a little sphagnum moss and a tiny piece of cork bark for a hide. I keep my juveniles in a clear flush lid AMAC box from the container store that I will link in the description of this video. It measures 4 by 4 by 5 inches. I use either a vent or drill or melt vent holes into the side and or top of the enclosure. I fill the enclosure up about two thirds with cocoa fiber, provide a hide and water dish, and usually a small fake plant and a little sphagnum moss and broken down dried leaves, mostly to give it a natural look. I still pour a little water down the corner of the enclosure to keep the bottom layer of the substrate a little more damp than the top layers. My juveniles still tend to burrow all the way down to the bottom, but spend a lot more time out in the open on top. They are notorious for filling up their water dishes with dirt or flipping it over, so I have to check on their water dish at least two to three times a week. Once they have outgrown that enclosure, I will move them into a two and a half to five gallon enclosure filled up at least halfway with EcoEarth cocoa fiber. I provide a large water dish, a cork bark hide, and some fake plants or moss for aesthetic purposes. 
I do not recommend using live plants with this species as the plants will require more light and moisture than the tarantula seems to prefer, but most importantly because this tea will most likely dig them up or cover them in dirt. I currently have my adult curly hair in a large 10 gallon enclosure with a foam back covered in eco earth and moss that I made myself. This is one of my display tarantulas that I keep on my desk at work. I like to keep the tarantulas I prominently display in larger, more visually appealing enclosures. They look very cool and friendly with that fluffy appearance and are a big hit with people that have no experience with tarantulas at all. This coupled with the fact that they are docile, slow moving, and rarely kick hairs or give threat postures make them a great ambassador for winning over the hearts and minds of non-tarantula keepers and arachnophobes. When it comes to feeding, I feed my smallest spiderlings flightless fruit flies and flower beetles, as well as pre-killed nymph roaches or pre-killed small crickets, and I avoid feeding them any prey larger than the tarantula. If I don't have anything small enough available to feed the spiderlings, I will pre-kill the smallest cricket I have and drop it in the enclosure for it to scavenge, or I'll use the legs of larger crickets or just cut the cricket in half. I always make sure I remove any uneaten prey 24 hours later and never leave uneaten pieces of prey in the enclosure to help prevent mold growth or mites. I feed my juveniles three or four small to medium crickets once every week or two, depending on the size of their abdomen. I don't use any prey larger than two thirds the size of the tarantula. And if I have to feed something larger, I will smash the prey's head before dropping it into the enclosure. This species can go weeks without eating, so I always check up on it 24 hours after feeding and remove any prey that they didn't eat and then try again in a week or two. I normally wait five to seven days after a molt before feeding a juvenile again. The larger the tarantula, the longer I wait after a molt before feeding again to give them plenty of time to harden up. And for adults, I feed my bee albo about five or six large crickets every two to three weeks and cut back to once a month as they get closer to pre molt and seem less interested in food. I still make sure to remove any uneaten prey or boluses within 24 hours and wait 10 to 14 days after a molt before attempting to feed again. I also mix up the prey with mealworms, roaches, and other feeders from time to time to give them a little variety in their diet. This tarantula is a staple in the hobby for good reason. They are very visually appealing, relaxed, easy to take care for, and can be kept at room temperature with no special requirements. If you're comfortable, your tarantula's comfortable. Though they tend to be more shy and hide a lot of spiderlings and even juveniles, once they're over three or four inches, they spend the majority of the time out where you can easily view them. And though they are slow moving as adults, you should be aware that spiderlings and juvies are much more skittish and will quickly dart into their burrows when disturbed. And caution should be used anytime you have their enclosure open as they can quickly bolt out an opening and escape their enclosure faster than you may be able to react. So be mindful and have a catch cup handy when feeding and rehousing them when they are small. Now this is definitely a species that you need in your collection if you don't have one already. It makes an excellent beginner tarantula for anyone new to the hobby, but it's also equally as fascinating for those of us that have been in the hobby for a long time. The cool thing about this tarantula is that it's fairly inexpensive and widely available, and a lot of online breeders will offer this as a freebie when you're placing an order for other tarantulas. So if you have the opportunity to pick up a curly haired tarantula, don't let that pass you by. I really enjoy this species a lot, I have both the hobby form and the the true form in my collection right now, and they're by far one of the easiest tarantulas to keep. Like with many tarantulas in the hobby, the science is still out, a lot of research is being done to determine exactly which species specific tarantulas are. We've seen that happen many times where tarantulas are moving from one genus to another, or from one species name to another, like with the uh, Brachypelma smithy homori, and maybe as time goes by and more research is done on the hobby form and the true form and the different locations in Honduras and Nicaragua. Nicaragua and Costa Rica that they find these tarantulas, there is a possibility they could be split up into different species. Or science could prove through DNA testing that they're all the same species, just different morph types. More will be revealed in time, so make sure you got that label maker handy. 
just in case. Well, if you enjoyed this video, be sure you hit that like button. It means a lot to me. And don't forget to share this video with your friends and subscribe if you haven't already. I upload videos every Tuesday for Tarantula Tuesday, and I'll occasionally upload an extra video later on in the week. If you want to stay up to date on what I'm doing in between these videos, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram. And if you want to support this channel, I do have a Patreon. You can find links to all of these different platforms down below in the description or by visiting my website, thetarantulacollective.com, where you can also find all kinds of cool Tarantula Collective merchandise. Well, thanks again for watching. I appreciate your support, and I will see you next Tuesday.